Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. This is the Best Tech Knives Malware. So, <laughs> sorry that name still kills me every time. Um, first off, I want to thank my buddy Nehemiah over at the Metal Effort channel for lending this guy along. He has this as a part of his personal collection, and you know, he showed it to me at one point. It was just like, damn. Okay, yeah, I'm borrowing that, because it's actually a very impressive little piece. But, um, yeah, you should check out his channel there. He's got a bunch of my stuff, but we've been trading back and forth, and it is a beautiful thing. Next thing, size comparison. This is not a small knife. Um, Here it is against your Spydeco Delica, your Rondario uh, Rat number 2, and your Spydeco PM2. So you can see here that uh, in terms of blade length-wise, this is bigger than all of those guys. This is a knife that really is a lot bigger than it feels in practice. You look at it, and it doesn't look huge, but then you measure it up the blade, and it's just like, holy crap. Um, this is coming in almost at four inches. This is a lot of blade right here. So um, that's something to keep in mind. Next thing, this is not a factory edge. This is an edge that Nehemiah put on after the market. It is a very nice edge, but it is not something that uh, Best Tech deserves the credit for. And finally, a quick note, this is a collaboration with Todd Knife and Tool. Um, you may know Todd Knife and Tool from Zelric. He is another YouTuber in the knife community, and um, that is his company. I think he owns it with somebody, uh, I think his brother or some other family member or another. But anyways, Todd Knife and Tool is Zelric, so um, he's got actually a nice video over there explaining his design choice and whatnot. So um, there you go. Let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, the ugly of this very interesting knife here. So to start with on the good side, this has surprisingly good ergonomics. Um, I say surprisingly because this thing looks like it's going to be a bag of hedgehogs when you first carry, when you first take a glance at it, but when you actually put your hand into place, in practice, it works pretty well. Yeah, there are a couple of hot spots. We'll talk about them later, but the ergos on this are actually shockingly good, despite the thing looking very angular and me. Next thing, they actually made a left-handed variant of this. That's really impressive. I know that there were about 10% of my viewers who were going to be super over the mood about that, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, doesn't happen very often, but it's nice to see when it does. Next thing, the action on this is good. Watch. Oh, yeah. Zero wrist absolutely deploys reliably 100% of the time. Uh, just absolutely great action. And actually, it, it is a very nice action on the close as well. This is a good, good action. I like it very much. In fact, the construction on the whole is very good. Um, the best deck has done very nice work here. It is easy to take apart. It is easy to put back together. The finishing on it is good. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with how this knife was built. The coatings all look nice. They did a good job. I mean, flat out, they, I have no complaints about the construction of this knife whatsoever. So that's good. Then finally, on the good side, I love the blade. It is well ground. Um, it, it comes to a very thin edge. I mean, the tip of this guy is very thin, and that's so important. I mean, sure, stock thickness plays a major role. Thick stock can be a problem, but when you grind it this thin, it's going to cut really well in everything but the thickest of, uh, yeah, or I'm sorry, the most dense of materials. I like that very, very much. Um, but it is also a relatively interesting blade shape. You can see here, if I put this up against the straight edge here, it actually is a one cliff blade, but it has some belly to it. It starts to curl up at the end there, which actually makes it a little bit more ergonomic in a lot of tasks and makes it so you're not so much carving into the table you're cutting on. I like that blade shape very much. It is a one cliff to the eye, but it is in practice actually a uh, well, something a little bit more subtle compared to a straight one cliff like this little guy here. This is the Smock Knives SK23, which is completely straight across. So um, there, there, there you go. Um, and then finally, it is S35VN steel, which is also a beautiful thing. So to me, all that is good. Love the blade. Good construction. Good action. Um, it is uh, a lefty variant is available uh, along with a bunch of different color options and whatnot. And the Ergos is surprisingly good. On the great side to me, this is a really unusual design. I mean, seriously, who's making a knife like this? I mean, it's super mean looking I, at one level, but it, it feels like it's like technological. This feels like a knife that was out of like Snow Crash or something like that. Like this is a knife that if I were a gargoyle, I would carry around. Not in the, the, the cartoon sense or the Notre Dame sense, but the Snow Crash sense. Anyways, I digress. Um, This is a knife that belongs in science fiction, and I love that. That appeals to me very, very much as a, um, just as an aesthetic here. Some of my very favorite knives are a little bit sci-fi, and that's, that's just great. Um, and so, and then the black and gold, by the way, is also very attractive. I, I just, I like the look of this knife. I mean, I, the, 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 the Todd knife and tool designs can be very polarizing, but this one is a win for me aesthetically. So to me, that's great. It's unusual. It's off the beaten path. And you know what? It looks pretty damn good. On the bad side, the price on this guy, it's fine. It's 200 bucks. Now, look, I, best tech is not a company that I have a huge, you know, um, I don't know, 
I, I, I don't, I've had some of their stuff. They've done some, I think they're still earning their way to higher price brackets, but you know what? This is a fine knife for 200 bucks. I think they've earned their price here. So, I mean, it's a little pricey, but this is the way that they start to be able to earn $200 pricing more and more. And, and so it's neutral. I mean, it's fine. It's okay. It's not great. It's not good. It's just there. Um, next thing, this guy looks on the, on the, the more negative side. This looks super violent. Um, what I mean by this is the lunchroom value of this knife is very low. If I take this guy out in the lunchroom, people will be diving behind chairs. This is just the nature of the beast and of scared people. Um, that's not something that's going to work in every situation, but, um, you know, hey, it, it, the thing looks evil. That's something you've got to keep in mind. Next thing, why is this not a sharpening choil? I mean, seriously, you've got everything here. It's a good finger choil. It works well for that, but why not just take it a little bit further, give me a little bit more room, and you end up with a beautiful sharpening choil on the knife rather than this. I mean, at least they have a very, very distinct plunge grind there, but ah, not a big fan of that. I'd like that to be a sharpening choil. Just makes life a little bit easier. Next thing, this guy badly needs a detent ramp. The ball, uh, the detent ball is very prominent. And then it hits up against this guy pretty readily. I would like to see a little ramp in there. It would make the world just a much better place. Next thing, this has lots and lots of hot spots. Unfortunately, they are not so much present and problematic on the knife itself when you are holding it as a blade. But you do get hot spots right here. As you're unlocking this, this is not a great little area here. This is too sharp. Um, you get all kinds of other hot spots. As you are just handling this guy, you get hot spots off here. And if you really grip hard, you definitely start feeling it. Mostly it's pretty ergonomic, but this is something that is, uh, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of it. It almost feels like a trademark, a thought knife, and duel. Some level, they do a lot of these very angular designs, and, you know, very often you get a lot of sharper edges here. Um, in cutting position, it's fine, but that's a little bit frustrating. Um, so to me, at least, that's um, the, 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 that's the bad, is that it, there were a bunch of little hot spots in this very angular design. Badly needs a detent ramp. This feels like it should be a sharpening choil right there. It looks super violent, and the price is neutral. Nothing really ugly here, so let's go to the final conclusion. This is a design knife. What I mean by that is that there is a world full of very vanilla pocket knives. I mean, you, you, there were knives where you take them out and you're just like, okay, that's another knife. Okay, whatever, not a big deal, but it's it's a knife. There's nothing super interesting, nothing super amazing. It's just like, yeah, it looks like a knife. This is not that. This is very unusual. It has a unique style. It has a sci-fi sort of thing. I, and I think that alone is going to be enough to interest a lot of people. There are going to be a, a group of people who look at this and go, wow, that looks cool. I want one of those. And that's important. But the thing is, in order to be a good design piece, you also have to be a good knife. And this is also a good knife. It has a very good action. It has good construction. It has ergos that are way better than the aesthetics suggest they might be. And, you know, honestly, it's a very nice blade. This is a good tool. It is a, a solid knife for actually doing cutting tasks. Um, sure, it's a little bit hot spotty. It's a bit scary to some. There are some details that maybe need to be fixed, but on the whole, honestly, this is a win. The knife that Nehemiah handed it to me was sitting, you know, that, that, you know, talking knives. He answers to me. He's like, oh, oh, that's, that's good. That's way better than I thought it was going to be. Whoa. Okay, cool. So I absolutely wanted to borrow this guy. And honestly, I, I so I'm very impressed. I think really well done, their best tech, well done, uh, the, the Zell, Todd Knife and Tool, just well done overall. And honestly, we need more of this in the knife community. We need more knives that are not trying to be everything to everybody. Knives that are really good functional tools, which this one is, um, but are weird as heck. Um, knives that really exude the DNA of their designer. Knives where you take one look at them and you're like, yep, I know who made that, that's cool. The malware is absolutely not going to be a design for everybody, but it doesn't have to be. All it has to do is appeal to a group of people and then be a damn good tool for them. And honestly, I think this little guy managed that. So if you are loving the look of the malware here, if you are lo loving what you're seeing here, and if you're really, you know, if you're, you're interested in this little guy, then by God, I think the uh, malware might be worth installing in your collection. So there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.